we are all deeply moved nowadays, and even those who claim not to be moved in China are subconsciously, subliminally moved by the heroic activities of many young Tibetans and old Tibetans who have immolated themselves, given their body, offered their bodies as sacrifice to the fire, to flames, without hurting anybody else, in order to show the intolerableness of, their, of the Chinese cultural genocide that is being practiced in Tibet. They want to show the world how serious and determined they are not to suffer a loss of their culture, a loss of their spirituality, a loss of their religion, a loss of their beloved teacher, His Holiness the Dalai Lama, and other teachers who are friends of His Holiness the Dalai Lama, who are also great lamas and great teachers. They want to have these people in their lives. They do not, they will not tolerate living without them any longer. And to show that, they're really offering their bodies to the flames in the most extraordinary act of heroism, kind of like a military warrior hero, but yet a hero of nonviolence who only harms himself and doesn't harm any other person. Now, this doesn't mean that we are encouraging people to do this. We would never ask any Tibetan. And if any Tibetan asked, either a high lama or a simple lay person, oh, can I, would it help if I immolated myself? Would that really turn people on to this trouble of Tibet? We would say, well, it might, but that we don't ask you to do that. It's much better you suffer whatever you're suffering and you develop your mind of love and compassion for people and stay here in your precious human body for the long haul and develop your you know, extraordinary enlightenment with your precious human life. That's the important purpose of human life. This is because of this kind of view of the nature of life, Tibetan culture does not have, as Chinese Buddhist and Vietnamese Buddhist culture more does have, the sort of self-immolation act of heroism as a featured event, so to speak. The Tibetans feel that you immolate your anger, you immolate your, your suffering, you immolate your egotism in the fire of your wisdom and thereby you become an enlightened being and, you, and it takes time, it takes learning, it takes meditation, and you use your human life to do that, preferable to giving away the body to the flames. However, so we would never encourage this. Neither does the Dalai Lama, neither does any Tibetan Lama or person encourage anybody else to do this. The Chinese are making false propaganda when they claim that somehow we're putting people up to this or anybody in the Tibetan movement is putting them up to it. However, once they do it, one has to honor their sacrifice. One has to praise their heroism. One has to perhaps regret that they gave of themselves so completely in such a short compass. And one has to pray for them to be reborn human. Again, Tibetan if possible, to have access to the precious teachings, to be able to cultivate their enlightenment and to live a long and peaceful and prosperous life after Tibet is free again, which we are confident it will be. There's no doubt in our mind there's no doubt in the mind of His Holiness the Dalai Lama that they, it will be free again. Anyone with real vision will admit, will acknowledge this. Only those who are depressed and who are cynical and who feel that nothing good can ever happen and the evil people will always have the power and the good people will always suffer, only those people, and therefore they don't really have to make an effort to do anything about it, those people are the ones who feel Tibet will never be free. And so in a way they are dooming Tibet in their own minds and hearts, actually, not to mention dooming themselves to a life of what Thoreau called lives of quiet desperation, quiet despair, what Henry David Thoreau called. So our official statement, if you will, of Tibet House U.S., although in a way we don't have an official statement in the sense that everyone, even in Tibet House U.S., is an individual. We believe that people are free and equal. But in a way, representing as the head of it, I want to give this more complicated picture that we are proud of those people and we honor their sacrifice. We do not urge anyone to do that and we urge them not to do it, in fact, as much as possible. But yet afterwards, we have to honor them. And that's what we do. And of course, the greater way of honoring them is not just saying that we honor them, but it is living up to their example and sacrificing a little bit of our egotism to help the Tibetan people and to help the starving people in Africa or in New York City or in Los Angeles or in Mexico or wherever they are starving or in, in, in uh, children, grown-ups, anyone. 
So helping others is also helping Tibet. So this is our statement about the immolation. It is calling us to action, not only for Tibet, but for everyone who, who is oppressed and who is suffering and who is enslaved everywhere in the world. This, that people would burn so much as to offer their body in that kind of cause should inspire us to offer and sacrifice a little bit of maybe our money or maybe our time or maybe our effort or maybe our attention to these nodes of suffering. Thank you very much. And by the way, finally, in the spirit of Tibetan culture, this doesn't mean we should be angry with the Chinese. It would be very bad if any one of those persons died with anger in their hearts for the Chinese. I was with His Holiness the Dalai Lama shortly after one of the early immolations a decade ago, when he, uh, more than a decade ago, when he happened to get to, it was in India, so he got to the hospital where the bandaged person was who eventually died in the hospital, but so he didn't survive, but he just survived for, for a day or two. And he managed to whisper into the bandages, okay, you made your statement, I'm sorry you lost your life, but what I want to tell you of, of greatest importance is please, please do not die with hatred or anger for the Chinese in your heart. Only feel compassion for them as well as for those they are tormenting, your own fellow Tibetans who are suffering. And absolutely do not die with anger or hatred in your heart. And he told me, His Holiness, that he was very happy that the gentleman somehow the bandages, he couldn't even see the face, he was so totally burned. But the bandages kind of moved up and down in an acknowledging and nodding gesture. And the Dalai Lama was extremely happy that he was able to give that message to the man. And so I don't suggest that any of those people who died of self-immolation did so with hatred or anger for the Chinese. If they did, they were definitely not ready for that sacrifice. And it would, simply doesn't work in that way. And we so deeply regret if they did that. Or if they were re angry at the beginning or beforehand maybe, once they were already in the between state, they realized they had a higher vision from the sacrifice and they felt only love for those who uh, were manifesting enmity and oppression toward them. Because the Buddha's teaching is we must love our enemies, just like Jesus said. And it provides a method for enlightened people or people on the path of enlightenment to learn to love their enemies. Because in a way, it's not that easy to follow that precept, which we all aspire to do. And actually, of course, it makes practical sense. It isn't just an impractical thing that Jesus taught. And Buddha taught the same thing. It's practical because love some, to love someone means you want them to be happy. If your enemy was truly happy, they definitely would not wear themselves out being your enemy. They would cheer up and be friendly, and that is what you want. So in a way, there's an enlightened self-interest component in loving your enemy and not feeling the misery of giving your mind and your life over to anger. That's chapter and verse in Tibetan Buddhist teaching. So thank you very much. This is our statement about the immolation. Uh, being a professor, I probably made it a little too long, but because it's on YouTube, you can turn it off anytime. All the best. <laughs>